January 9th, 2018 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Alcoffer? Here. Mr. Ancello? Here. Mr. Baroth? Here. Ms. Boyce? Here. Mr. Brew? Here. President Carbone? Here. Mrs. Conley? Here. Mr. Delahanty is excused. Mrs. DeFlorio? Here. Mrs. Draw is excused. Mr. Felder? Mr. Flagler Mitchell. Here. Ms. Harris. Here. Mr. Hebert. Here. Mr. Howland. Here. Ms. Kaylee is excused. <coughs> Mr. Lightfoot. Here. Mr. Mafucci. Here. Mr. Marionetti. Here. Mr. Michike. Here. Mr. Morelli. Here. Mr. Moyo. Here. Mr. Rocco. Here. Mr. Shepard. Here. Ms. Taylor is excused. Mr. Turp. Here. Mr. Wilcox. Mr. Wilt? Here. Mr. Zale? Here. Please stay seated. I'd like to introduce Pastor Ian Slentz of Christ Community Church, who has been invited by legislator Mike Zale. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to pray for us uh, this evening real quick, but I just want to let you know why I'm praying the way I'm praying this evening. So. In the Bible, King Solomon asks God for one thing when he finally receives uh, his kingship. And he asks God for wisdom. And he didn't ask God for position or for more authority or prominence. He asked God for wisdom for justice for his people. And so tonight, I'm going to pray for wisdom for you. And God was very impressed by Solomon's request, and he granted not only wisdom, but he granted prominence, and he granted authority, and he became one of the greatest Hebrew kings, historically speaking. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the authority of all authorities the first and the foremost of all lawgivers. You are the judge of all judges. You are the solid truth that defines all of humanity. Everything you say and do is justice. And God, I know that you are not tame, not by any means, but I know that you're good and that you love each of us and that you care for us and that you care about justice for all of us. And so, recognizing not only your authority and power and fierce justice, but also your goodness and benevolence and your friendly heart towards us, I address you boldly on behalf of these officials to ask for your help. For each man and woman here, I ask for a sense of purpose that what they're doing here I pray for that sense of purpose like they have never experienced it before. I ask you for wisdom, for justice that only you can give. And as you said that a government divided against itself will not stand in the long run, I ask you to give a sense of unity here tonight, Jesus, and a desire for unity to each person here, because I know you really don't care what side of the room they sit on. Your love and your justice is the same for each one. So, Lord Jesus, you are officially invited to this meeting, and I thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Slentz. Little certificate. Okay, please stand as Legislator Brian Marinetti will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, Legislator Marinetti. At this time, I ask you that to remain standing without objection. We'll take agenda item number 22 out of the regular agenda order. Agenda item number 22 is moved by Legislator Marionetti, seconded by Legislator Lightfoot. Will the clerk please read the resolution in memoriam for David Bonacci, East Rochester Town Justice, former East Rochester Mayor, and former East Rochester Police Sergeant. 
expressing regret of the Munner County Legislature on the recent passing of David Bonacci, East Rochester Town Justice, former East Rochester Mayor, and former East Rochester Police Sergeant. Be it resolved that the Munner County Legislature hereby expresses its deep sympathy at the recent passing of East Rochester Town Justice, former East Rochester Mayor, and former East Rochester Police Sergeant David Bonacci. And whereas David passed away December 24, 2017, at the age of 62, after a courageous battle with brain cancer. And whereas David graduated from East Rochester in 1973 and began his lifelong commitment to public service as a part of the United States Army until 1976. In 1979, he began his work with the village of East Rochester in the police department, eventually earning the of sergeant. He served with the department until 2000 and was deeply committed to law enforcement and criminal justice. And whereas David served the village of East Rochester as mayor from 2001 until 2008. In 2012, he became an East Rochester town justice. He was elected to a four-year term in 2013 and re-elected to this, pa this past November. He was a well-regarded and respected member of the East Rochester community that he served for nearly 40 years. And whereas David was a gifted golfer and was the 1994 New York State Amateur Golf Champion. He was a kind and loving husband and father. He is survived by his loving wife of 36 years, Roseanne, three devoted sons, Brian, Michael, and Eric, two grandchildren, three brothers, brother-in-law, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and many dear friends. And whereas David will be remembered as a kind leader who worked tireless, tirelessly for his community, as well as a loving family man. He will be greatly missed by all who knew him. Be it further resolved that the clerk of the legislature is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the bereaved family. This resolution was adopted unanimously with each legislator rising in his or her place for a moment of silence. Again, if you would remain standing without objection, we will now take agenda item number 23 out of the regular agenda order. Agenda item number 23 is moved by Legislator Marianetti and seconded by Legislator Lightfoot. Will the clerk please read the resolution in memoriam for Mary Randall, Chief of the Special Victims Trial Division for the Office of the Monroe County District Attorney. Expressing regret of the Monroe County Legislature on the recent passing of Mary Randall, Chief of the Special Victims Trial Division for the Office of the Munner County District Attorney. Be it resolved that the Munner County Legislature hereby expresses its deepest sympathy at the recent passing of Mary Randall, Chief of the Special Victims Trial Division for the Office of the Munner County District Attorney. And whereas Mary Randall passed away on December 7, 2017, surrounded by her loving family at the age of 56. And whereas Mary earned her associate's degree in political science from Monroe Community College, and her Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Mary then went on to earn her Juris Doctor from the University of Dayton School of Law. Mary was an active member of the Monroe County Bar Association and has served at the, as the United Way representative for the Monroe County District Attorney's Office. Mary served our community for 28 years, beginning and ending her career in the Office of the District Attorney. She was a fierce advocate for victims and families. And whereas Mary began her law career in the office of the district attorney as an assistant district attorney, serving for 11 years in the major felony bureau prior to entering private practice. She served as an attorney in private practice for 11 years where she concentrated on criminal and family court matters. Mary then came back to the dis district attorney's office where she served as the chief of the special victims trial division she was also a frequent lecturer for police training. Her commitment and dedication to the community was admirable. And whereas she is survived by her three beloved children, siblings, their spouses, many nieces, nephews, and adoring friends. And whereas Mary will be remembered as a loving mother, sibling, and friend, she has served the community through her kindness, advocacy, and friendship. She will be missed by all who knew her. Be it further resolved that the clerk of the legislature is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the bereaved family. 
this resolution was adopted unanimously with each legislator rising in his or her place for a moment of silence. I'd like to acknowledge, acknowledge the family of Mary Randall and our district attorney, Sandra Dorley. Be seated. Your copy of the journals of day 13, December 13, 2017, and day 1, January 3, 2018 are available on your tablet. Without exception, both journals will stand approved as submitted. There's a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those who are hearing impaired. Anyone requiring assistance should inquire in the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or electronic devices in your possession, I would request that you make it inaudible for the duration of the meeting. Thank you for your cooperation. Legislators, please join me in welcoming Legislator Ed Wilt this evening. Uh, Legislator Wilt was appointed. <laughs> Legislator Wilt was appointed to this honorable body last week to represent the residents of District 1. Legislator Wilt, please come forward so they, may I present you with these legislature pins. Two. Congratulations. All right, there you go. Thank you. Legislators, the referrals submitted to the legislature for the next committee cycle are available on your tablet as well as online. This evening there are several proclamations scheduled. Madam Clerk. Would Dr. Jeffrey Wyatt please come forward? Also President Dr. Joe Carbone, County Executive Cheryl Donolfo, Legislator Matthew Turp, and Legislator George Hebert. Dr. Jeffrey Wyatt has been veterinarian of the Seneca Park Zoo for over 35 years. His commitment to the zoo has made him a leader and a respected voice in the industry. And whereas Dr. Wyatt has retired from his role as the zoo's primary veterinarian, but his impact on fellow employees, interns, and guests will always be remembered. Dr. Wyatt has not only provided consistent veterinary care, but has also been responsible for spearheading the growth of the conservative or conservation science activities. And whereas Dr. Wyatt started at the zoo in 1982, his job responsibilities include directing the conservation biology program and veterinary care on zoo grounds and in field research studies. In addition, Dr. Wyatt sits on the collection, senior staff, and conservation committees at the zoo. He also sits on the AZA Accreditation Commission AZA Ethics Board, AAALAC Accreditation Council, Morris Animal Foundation Animal Welfare Advisory Board, and the Rochester Embayment AOC Remedial Action Committee. And whereas Monroe County has been fortunate to have Dr. Wyatt serve as the Director of Animal Health and Conservation for many years, his leadership has guided the zoo and his impact will continue to be felt in the years to come. Dr. Wyatt has truly exemplified professionalism and commitment in his time with Monroe County. Now therefore, we Cheryl Donolfo County Executive, Dr. Joe Carbone President, Matthew Turp Legislator District 8, and George Hebert Legislator District 15 on behalf of Monroe County do hereby recognize and congratulate Dr. Jeffrey Wyatt on his dedication to the Seneca Park Zoo. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for the very kind words. I will forever be grateful for the opportunity to work at Seneca Park Zoo, saving animals from extinction. It's been a real honor. The zoo defines me. It still defines me. And I look forward to working through partnerships, especially through planetary health and international programming with the zoo and the medical center. Thank you very much.
Would Ben Wilson please come forward? Also, President Dr. Joe Carbone and Legislator Matthew Turp. <laughs> Having pride in one's community is important and admirable. The Webster community is lucky to have a dedicated and ever-present supporter in Ben Wilson. Ben shows his spirit and support at Webster athletic events by cheering for Webster teams and waving his signature handmade spirit stick. And whereas Ben Wilson attends nearly every JV and varsity sporting event for both Webster High Schools, Webster Schroeder, and Webster Thomas, he is known around the Webster community as a one-man pep squad, cheering on Webster teams from the stands. Ben graduated from Webster Schroeder in 2002 and has been committed to going to Webster sporting events for nearly a decade. And whereas Webster athletes depend on Ben's passionate support of their teams while they are competing, he is enthusiastic about supporting Webster sports and looks forward to being Webster's superfan for a long time. Coaches, athletes, and other spectators at these events appreciate and look forward to Ben's encouragement and spirit. And whereas we are happy to have members of our community who are so committed to the success of our student athletes, the pride that Ben Wilson has shown in Webster Thomas and Webster Schroeder is inspiring. Ben's support for Webster athletics does not go unnoticed as he continually encourages encourages athletes to do their best and stay positive. Now therefore, we, Dr. Joe Carbone, President, and Matthew Turp, Legislator, District 8, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate Ben Wilson for his commitment and support of Webster Athletics. I'll make this short and sweet, but uh... I'd like to thank everybody in the uh, Webster community for giving me, me this opportunity to recognize me and my, uh, my mom and my dad who would support me through all the uh, bad times and the good times and in between times. Uh, couldn't have done without you and certainly to, to be an honor to be a part of the Webster community. Uh, I thank you very much for this and uh, go Webster. We will now recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing. I declare open the public hearing on local law entitled Amending Local Law Number 10 of 2007 entitled Authorizing a Real Property Tax Exemption for Cold War Veterans under Real Property Tax Law Section 458-B. There are no speakers registered for this hearing. There being none, I declare this public hearing closed and reconvene the January 9th, 2018 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature. There are no formal committee reports scheduled for this evening. We will now hold the public forum. We have several people registered to address the legislature. Madam Clerk. If you require assistance, a deputy is available to assist you in approaching the lectern. I will call three people forward at one time. Each speaker will have two minutes in which to address the legislature and kindly conclude your remarks when the timer sounds and exit through the back of the chambers. Thank you for your cooperation. Our first three speakers will be Mark Preston, Bill Hampson, and Pat Rickards. I'm a resident of Fairport, and I've been a small business owner since 2008. My business is Ops and Eng, and that is how I've made my living since 2008. I am a veteran. I am a service-disabled veteran-owned small business that has been verified through the Center for Veteran Enterprise with the Veterans Administration. I'm also a service-disabled veteran-owned business that has been certified and registered with the New York State Office of General Services. Uh, tonight during the prayer, we are guided towards wisdom and justice. And during the Pledge of Allegiance, we talked about liberty. Veterans need your help. Right now, the, in the wisdom of the federal government, they realize it's important to diversify their supplier base to include many small businesses. 
Over 23% of all federal contracts need to go to small businesses, and those are defined into certain categories, women-owned, minority-owned, hubs-owned, veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned. Under our governor, uh, about a year ago, he championed a program where New York State has also set a goal that 6% of their purchases will come from their service-disabled veteran and supplier base of companies. They have the wisdom to realize that it's important for the country, it's important for the state, and it's important for the veterans that they seek to help and support those veterans with a priority. Uh, a year ago when I came here, the online application did not include registration for veteran-owned or service-disabled veteran-owned to be a supplier to Monroe County. That has since been updated. However, there is no requirement or goal to do business with veterans or service-disabled veterans. I seek your assistance. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, legislators, uh, county executive, other dignitaries. Most of you know me. I'm one of the 1,802 county employees that had their uh, health care that was affiliated with the county uh, canceled, uh, contrary to a contract. And I usually speak off the cuff, but I'm going to read something, uh, one of my other little talents. This is called Right and Wrong. I was a deputy sheriff for 25 years. I put up with danger, long hours, and fears. I gave up General Motors that was over twice the pay, but got guarantees that brightened my day. With two young children, now my wife had to work. I felt bad about that, was I a jerk? But we persevered, all was okay. <clears throat> we had guarantees that brightened our day. One was health care that lasted for life. Some plans included even the wife. After age 65, our plans seemed diminished. We didn't lose them, so we weren't finished yet. Then I lost my health care at age 71. A benefit I was promised had all come undone. Health care for life, but lost it instead. At age 71, I was not dead. Medicare pays 80%, it's true, but the 20% can bankrupt you. So here we are, a group of 1,802, wondering what are we going to do. The county will give us 600 this year to find a new plan and get in the gear. $50 per month is better than zero, but it doesn't make the county our hero. In an age where coverage is so instrumental, we lost our health care that was so fundamental. We need our county to do what's right, honor our contract, don't make us fight. Integrity is key to solving this wrong. Give us back what we lost and deserved all along. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Pat Rickards. Uh, to all the legislators in this chamber, thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I'd like to speak regarding the Monroe County Sheriff's Office retirees' health care benefit. When I was hired on 13 November 90, I was told by the representative from Monroe County HR, Ms. Deborah Wood, that I would be covered by Monroe County for medical coverage throughout my employment and in retirement under whatever contract I retired under. I received coverage equal to my coverage in retirement until I turned 65 and by federal law required to go on Medicare and pay a monthly premium deducted directly from my Social Security check. As soon as I went on Medicare, Monroe County cut the amount they pay for my medical coverage and they began administering my health insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield. My coverage now includes higher co-payments and higher prescription charges. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I can see this is not the same coverage as when I retired. I realized this as soon as I went to get a prescription fill for a medication I have used for about 15 years. I was told by the representative from Blue Cross Blue Shield that Monroe County dictates what medications they will cover under each tier. This medication was put in tier five. It was not covered at all by Monroe County. This one medication would cost me $425 if I wanted to use it. 
I feel my doctor is best suited to advise me on my care, not Monroe County. I'm very fortunate that I do not require very many medications or have to go to the doctor often, but this could change quickly and would become a monetary burden to me as it has for some retirees. I've supplied each of you with copies of the medical coverage outlined in the past, in the two past and the most current contract negotiated with Monroe County. As you can see, this section has not changed except that out of area coverage has been added for retirees. My understanding is that I would maintain under a binding contract the same coverage as when I retired as Monroe County's ex at Monroe County's expense for myself and my spouse until death. Something that was planned for by my wife and me, if this language was not in the contract, I would have gone in a different direction to ensure my spouse and I were covered with respect to medical care and retirement. You cannot change the rules just as you want. This is affecting people's lives. Monroe County has changed their coverage for me and my spouse by covering only $600 per year of my medical expenses. This is not the same coverage that we had previous to turning 65. It should be noted that Health Economics, the company Monroe County has hired to administer this $600, has yet to furnish me with the resources I am supposedly going to get. When I called Health Economics to inquire about this, I was told that my card was not scheduled to be generated yet. When I inquired as to when this card was going to be available, I was told we do not know. When I asked what am I supposed to do in the meantime and was told I would just have to wait. As of today, I have not re re yet received this card. It is my feeling that the people from HR as well as Ms. Denolfo do not know what is happening with respect to this program they forced on retirees. Each of the legislators in this body and Ms. Denolfo are complicit in the deception with respect to ensuring that contracts are negotiated in good faith and adhered to by both parties. This type of action by Monroe County is no different than a contractor targeting older adults and taking advantage of them when they are most vulnerable. We have seen these contra contractors have been arrested for their actions. I feel Monroe County has forgotten the retirees of the Sheriff's Office fulfilled their obligation while working to the best of their ability. Monroe County then just forgets this and only looks to save money on the backs of retirees. Mr. To listen Murray. to Mr. Connor tell the press that by cutting retirees' benefits to save taxpayers $600,000 per year is appalling. What he does not tell the press is by doing this, Monroe County is in breach of a contract. I feel that by allowing Ms. Denolfo to continue to change how the county handles contracts, will affect every legislator to maintain their seat in this body. I know the retirees will fight to elect legislators that will stand by negotiated contracts and not target retirees' benefits. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers are Douglas Moffitt, Daniel Prince, and James Youngsman. County Executive Denolfo, Executive County Executive Van Stradock, and President Carbone, and ladies and gentlemen of the legislature. You've seen me here in November. I talked before. I'm here today to make a promise to some members of our legislature, some that have failed to listen to our plea. If you think you're entitled to your seat, think again. If you think that we work for you, we the people, think again. And if you think you're a shoe in in 2019, really think again. If you think November 7th, 2017 election and 30,000 vote swing was a fluke, you are wrong. I request that you please do not be the next fluke. Tonight, I again requesting that the legislature in a bipartisan manner bring forth a resolution to right the wrong by the unconscionable acts of some Republican legislators continue endorsement. On 12-31-2017, 1,800 retirees of the Monroe County had their medical benefits canceled or terminated. 
that egregious act by some of this legislature puts all of you in violation of Monroe County Legislature Resolution of 1966. We expect the media release for the resolution via TV, radio, co-sponsored by both parties of this legislature to bring back our benefits and restore them to what they were when we retired. No more lip service. Because we will seek you out and we will tell your constituents by mail, TV, by mouth, or any other media that we have at our, at our fingertips what you have done to us. And we will use that to remove you from office. But on the other hand, the same media will be used to praise the legislators that are on our side and have met our plea. That includes sending out letters for them, telling their constituents that they are to be voted for. And, then, and lastly, what I'd like to say is this is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I'd like to thank some of the legislators in this office right now for sticking up for us. And I'm really very disheartened with my Republican colleagues. I wish everyone in this legislative body a safe and happy New Year's. Thank you for letting me speak, and God bless. Greetings and good evening, and especially to my brothers and sisters from the Monroe County Sheriff's Department. In 1990, I have no prepared statement or nothing written down here. Everything I have to say comes from the heart. And in 1990, I remember hearing an uh, ad on the radio for Monroe County Dep Deputy Sheriffs uh, to take the exam. And one of the things that attracted me, although I loved my job at the time, was lifetime benefits. And I gave up a job I loved, and, and I do appreciate all I, I've been given with my 25 years in Monroe County Sheriff's Office. However, I'm very disheartened about what's happening now, because we make a promise when we did the job we did with integrity and to deal with adversity and to deal with all the things that are thrown at you in the job we did. And as a taxpayer and our county legislatures, who are also citizens, when you call the fire department, you expect the fire department to show up when your house is burning. You call 911, you don't expect the 12 year old from down the street to show up with a bucket of water. When you call the police, you expect trained professionals like the Monroe County Sheriff's deputies to show up. You don't expect the rental security, security agency to show up to save some money. You get what you pay for. And when I remember when I took the job and I, I applied, it attracted me that you give and you receive. And it attracted some really, really, really good people that I uh, am proud to have worked so long with. Really good people. And their kids and generations is why you see generations of law enforcement and uh, fire department people, because they pass it down to their kids. And I wonder now what's going to happen when, you know, I, I don't hear so much anymore that when benefits are being pulled away at the 11th hour, and things aren't as good as they used to be where you're encouraging your, your children and, and the young ones to go on and for a career in law enforcement or the fire department or EMS or whatever it may be. Because it's, the rug gets pulled out from you at the 11th hour, it's, it's no good. And everything I was promised was, you know, lifetime benefits and like uh, my colleague Doug Moffat mentioned a minute ago, it's not what he signed up for and it is a watered down version of what was promised. And things can change for everybody. And there are a lot of voters. And we, have, we can reach a lot of people. And we've done our job, and we expect to be reimbursed for it, what we were promised. Thank you for your time. Jim Youngman, lifelong Monroe County resident. 1980-89. <laughs> working jobs, just trying to stay alive. Oh, got married. Oh, I better get a radio job. A few years later, oh, I had a kid. I need a good job. Better go back to school. Go back to school. Happen to see a posting. Deputy Sheriff Jailer. Filled out some forms, took some tests, sworn in 1990, October 1990. 
Was it for the money? No, I was already making more money than that. Great hours, time off, it's really funny. Benefits? Absolutely. Having married a disabled person, quadriplegic in a wheelchair for her life, benefits were our foremost priority, period. So, always was told, great benefits. Pay's not great, great benefits. Take the job, 23 years, no regular days off, no holidays, no weekends, no good time for vacation for 20 years or so, filthy working environment, hanging with criminals every day, not knowing where I was on any given day, what building or what, until roll was over. Yep, 23 years. Why? Benefits. Mostly health care. There's other benefits, but health care was important to me. I had a young child. I had a disabled wife. From the day I was hired, and after each contract negotiated, it was written in plain English that I would health care benefits in my retirement for myself and my spouse, equal to the benefit coverage at the day of retirement. Everyone in this room knows it's a fact if you bothered reading the contract. I can't say whether you did or didn't. Individual suits have already been taking place on the same language in the contract. You guys lost and lost appeal. You sit there, no integrity, no moral values whatsoever. You just take, you just take it away. Oh, we didn't mean that. Sorry. Oh, 23 plus years? Nah. Sorry, we didn't really mean that. We didn't write it down. We didn't sign that contract. It doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, what you're reading doesn't exist. We didn't mean any of it. Now, after two consecutive battles with cancers, I got to have my health care taken away. As my wife ages and becomes more disabled, although she's worked her whole life and is still working, now you're going to take her health care away as soon as she can't work anymore. It's, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And each and every one of you has allowed this to happen. When you go to bed at night and you lay your head down on the pillow, you know. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. And just do what's right. That's all I got to say. Our next three speakers are Paul Fursella, Dwight Moxley, and Joel Shapiro. I am Paul Fursella. Last month at the Monroe County Legislator meeting, a bunch of people wore red shirts. These people have been stripped of their health care benefits. I strongly recommend that whomever took these benefits away, they restore these benefits to these people right now. Hello, Monroe County government. Allow me to put my Raiders hoodie on, which I saved especially for this um, occasion. Uh, I only have two minutes. All right, last month, I tried in two minutes to tell you that this whole Monroe County may sue uh, the opioid manufacturers. It's like, it's based, it's, it's, it's useless. You're not going to solve the problem doing this. And whatever money you recover, tell me, sheriffs, sheriff association, you think that money is going to go to you? Well, I got a bridge over the Genesee River. When this article first came out, I tried to get in touch with Ms. Denofalo several times to discuss with her my evidence that the course she's pursuing is, is um, ludicrous, it's asinine. No response, no response. Then I got a call from Mr. Van Striden, the executive director. He says, we're going ahead with the, uh, 
um, the, case, the court cases, and he's open to talk to me. Well, all it was was a discussion between us of facts and figures that had no reference, no matter. So I said, I'm going to go and send you what I have, and then maybe we can discuss it. I called him back. He never got my email. But now I find out Monroe County is going to go ahead with their little lawsuit. It's not a little lawsuit. And they're doing so without any um, basis, without any solid facts. They just feel that this is what to do, and they're going to do it. It's like Donald Trump. How much time do I have? That's your two minutes. What? You can go a little bit further. OK. It's like Donald Trump. He says that the, uh, his, the, his inaugura inauguration was the most attended in history. But it really wasn't. But worse yet, he doesn't want to be in a position where he has to go and defend himself. He will nice slyly slip by and not hear any evidence to the contrary. I tried to go and give you the evidence, but you don't want to hear it. At least in my um, Brighton Town Council, they hold hearings. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. But at least they give me the opportunity to voice my opposition and have it etched in stone. But not here. Oh, no, not here. And as far as my uh, Raiders jacket is concerned, it's like me being in a... Uh, in a uh, okay, you can please summarize. You know. It's like me being in a, uh, like the distillery, and all the Bills fans are surrounding me. And this is the middle of Buffalo Billy fan, of Billy Dum. Please summarize. Okay. The main point is is that there is no. Good afternoon, good afternoon. My name is Dwight Moxley. I'm a combat veteran, college educated MCC, Brockport, uh, credits from military leadership, Army Accommodation Medal, Navy Accommodation Medal, accolades go on and on. Um, I'm here to petition for the Service Disabled Owned Veteran Small Business. One of the things about acquiring that certification, there's a three, three year qualification for the certification. Once you qualify, you have the certification for three years. It is almost as if I can only, as I have some fellow uh, veterans in the room, some from the county, it's like getting an award on your lapel. I qualified. I did what I needed to do for my country to get that. And that's one of the reasons why I came here with my fellow veterans. We ask you, yes, I can do business with the federal government. Yes, I can do business with Syracuse. Yes, I can do business anywhere around the country. But why can't I do business in my own backyard? were the people that I know, the people that I raised, the people that I fought for. And that's why I'm here with my fellow veterans. We ask you, bring it back home so I can be able to feed my family with the people I live and work around. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Stephen Service, Robert Kehoe, and Sister Grace Miller. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Service, no pun intended. Um, a few years ago, a law was passed in the state of New York that basically stated that um, if the government has funding and uh, they have to want to do business with other state agencies, that they should set aside 6% of that funding for service disabled veteran owned businesses. I am a veteran, I'm also a service disabled veteran, and I do own a service disabled veteran -owned business in the city of Rochester. Um, I don't have a prepared speech, but what I'm asking the legislature to do is adopt 
and pass the law, something very similar that was passed at the state level, at the Monroe County level. Anyone who asks me, am I hiring anyone? I say, no, I can't, actually. One of the reasons is I don't have enough money, actually, to hire more people. I would like to contribute to the economic development of uh, Monroe County, the city of Rochester. And um, the only way I can actually do that is if, um, if some of these uh, opportunities to spend money on veteran businesses like mine, if you could set aside 6% of that spending, that would definitely help me to hire more people because I want to contribute to the economic development of Rochester and Monroe County. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Mr. Nolfo and Judge Van Strydock, Mr. Napier, President Carbone, honorable members of the legislature, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are, the first month of a new year. But not much has really changed since last month, has it? The recent temperatures up until uh, a couple of days ago have been near all-time lows. The stock market is still at all-time highs. The Buffalo Bills have still not won a playoff game in this century, and the jail and the Civil Bureau deputies are still working without a contract. Of course, a few things have changed. For one, the legislature has a new president. Congratulations, Thank Dr. You. Carbone. Thank you. And a couple of new members have joined this body, Mr. Wilt and Dr. Mifuchi. For another thing, Monroe County now has a Democrat chair for the first time in some 38 years. As we are all aware, Todd Baxter quite decisively defeated the longtime Republican incumbent in November. Many folks think that a significant reason for that outcome was the perception that Patrick O'Flynn did not take care of his people. And speaking of not taking care of your people, as of January 1st, some 1,800 Monroe County retirees have had their promised health insurance coverage terminated by this county administration. These older and disabled retirees have now been forced to find and to fund their own health insurance using that oh-so-generous $50 per month gift from the county. Isn't it ironic and sad that I have to talk about this issue today, as Doug Moffat mentioned, which happens to be National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day? So much for appreciation. The blatant disregard of these contractually guaranteed benefits cannot be allowed to stand. And you, ladies and gentlemen of the legislature, have a moral and an ethical obligation to take whatever action is necessary to reverse this travesty without delay. One more thing has changed since last month. We're now that much closer to November the 5th of 2019, and we are not going away. Thank you for your attention. I came here tonight with a message, but I have to say that what I'm hearing is extremely sad, an extremely sad commentary on this Republican-controlled legislature. Sometimes I wonder how you can sleep at night. My message tonight has to do with homelessness. The House of Mercy opened up in 1985 because too often I would pick up homeless persons off the street take them to homeless shelters, and have the shelters refuse them. And this happened in brutal winters. 
and it happened because of the rules and regulations of the county's Republican-controlled welfare system to save the county money, save money over the lives of our most vulnerable poor. And after opening up the House of Mercy, I soon discovered our poor were dying too young and too quickly. And we saved the obituaries of our dying, and I hung them up on my office so we would all remember them. Many obituaries were four deep on my walls. After two years, about two years ago, Harry Murray, he's going to be speaking to you, a professor of sociology at Nazareth College, started a study on these obituaries, which he recently completed. And the outcome of this study is startling. I knew what was happening. But to hear statistically what I knew was heartbreaking and cut me to the core. Homelessness is something this county needs to look at very seriously. Your rules and your regulations through the welfare department are hurting our poor. Your sanctions are killing our homeless. And many homeless are sanctioned and don't even know why they are sanctioned. And many of our homeless are mentally ill and do not receive the help that they justly deserve. They are hospitalized and they're put right back out on the streets. If we don't accept them, they're left on the streets. But we take them in because this county is not taking care of them. They can languish and die on our streets. This is serious. And you legislators have a serious responsibility of taking care of the poor, the most vulnerable, on our streets, in our city, in our county. And I want to inform you that many a homeless come from your suburban districts. Our next three speakers are Harry Murphy, Ed Ramsberger, and Sister Rita Lewis. Hi, I'm Harry Murray, and I am a professor of sociology at Nazareth College. Before I start, I, I do want to say that as a Monroe County taxpayer, I would rather see my taxes raised than know that my county has, has reneged on its commitments to its, to its retirees. Okay. As, thank you. As Sister Grace said, I converted her wall into uh, quantitative data. I found 193 homeless persons who had died, 155 men and 38 women. The average age at death was 52 and a half years, compared to life expectancies of 73.6 in the 14621 zip code and 78.2 years for Monroe County as a whole. Most disturbingly, the average age of death for men was 55 years, while for homeless women it was 42 years. This is just a little more than half the life expectancy of the average woman in Monroe County of 81.7 years. These numbers reflect, reflect the results of other local studies in other American cities. Um, universally, the studies show that folks who are homeless die, live 20 years less than folks who are not homeless. Two decades. 
So homelessness is not just a matter of not having a roof over your head. It is a life-threatening emergency. I would go so far as to call it a death sentence. Um, I have a lot of recommendations, but I'll just say one. Listen to Sister Grace. She's the conscience of the community. I'm Sister Rita, and I work at the House of Mercy. In the prayer this evening, we heard the prayer for wisdom and justice. Where is the wisdom and the justice? And where is the compassion? When we can renege on benefits for retired employees, when we can deny a poor person placement for housing, when we can deny their public assistance application because they missed an appointment, even though transportation was very difficult for them, and that is why they missed their appointment. I am working with a family that it's been very difficult to get through the welfare system. It's very difficult. And I mean, this gentleman missed an appointment, and I tried for like four hours to resolve it. And I got switched from person to person and ended up at the first person I spoke to in the beginning. No help. No help at all. So I, I'm going to go to a fair hearing with this individual. Hopefully it'll get resolved that way. But so many weeks without help. Um, it, it just isn't right. It just isn't fair that people have to go through that. It seems like the welfare system is designed to not help people instead of trying to help them get what they need to get on their feet. You know, it's when are we going to change the system and make it compassionate and caring and helpful to the people who really need it. You know, it seems like when it's okay to take away rights and help from certain people, all of a sudden that group of people seems to swell and begins to encompass more and more people who end up being hurt and, and trampled on. So I think we really need to take notice of what's going on and, and what are we going to do to help the people who really need it in our community. And never mind, we don't have money to do it. It's not true. We know that. Good evening. Madam County Executive, Mr. President, welcome to the new job. Thank you. Legislators, ladies and gentlemen, and Sheriff Baxter, we wish you all the good luck as well, sir. Uh, well, here we are another month. And we are still here monitoring what's going on with our contractually agreed upon health benefits. And this is not just a county deputy situation anymore. 1,800 some odd people have been thrown to the wolves. And when you speak in terms of the $600 benevolent uh, Benny card, I guess it's called, I just had $1,700 in dental surgery and a prescription yesterday, which didn't cost me more than 15 bucks last month is now $63. So your $600 is pretty shallow. I want to hold up my new card that's in my wallet that was not contractually agreed upon, not signed by anybody in my union, my sheriff's administration. I want to hold up that Benny card, which is not much left after, oh my God, it's the ninth day of the month. Uh, a not contractually agreed upon, not asked for, and I also want to remind you and show you a Bible. I carried this for all the years I was on the road. And I said one little thing every night, every day. Don't let me hurt anybody, and don't let anybody hurt me. Remember who placed our hands on the Bible so many times in court. Your Honor, you know how that goes. 
a law enforcement person has the only thing in themselves, and that is their integrity. That is their reputation. And when you put your hand on the Bible, you better mean it. And don't hurt anybody. Well, you're hurting people. I'm in pretty good shape, but I know of some people that are older than I, retired, and they're hurting. Financially, not only medically. I just want to let you know that we'll be watching, and we'll see you next month. Thank you for your time, sir. Our last speakers are Bridget Hurley and Dan McDonald. Good evening. Happy 2018. Um, I have a New Year's resolution that was, I have to say, suggested to me, but um, I'm going to adopt it, and that is that every month when I'm speaking with you, I'm going to share a um, solution to uh, problems facing children and families that has been proven to work in other communities that we might want to consider adopting here in Monroe County. Um, and so tonight I want to talk about Child Protective Services. And uh, what happens when a call comes into the hotline? So what happens now, and you know, of course the point is that when the call comes in, we want the person answering the phone to determine is a child at risk? Because if there is a child whose safety is at risk, we want to send a, a worker out to visit the family. If the situation is not placing a child at risk, we don't want to use those resources to intrude in a family's life when they're not needed. So what happens now is someone answers the call and using a lot of training and judgment, they decide whether or not to send a worker out to visit the family. Using the criteria that if what they're being told is true, that situation is actually abuse or neglect. So what other communities have done, and particularly Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is they have adopted a software program that confidentially accesses all kinds of information about the family, criminal justice records, health records, and have taken care of all the issues around HIPAA and whether or not that, um, that the person can't see the family's history. The algorithm just determines um, what uh, the history of that family might say about the child and the family and whether that child is at risk given what they're hearing on the phone. So it's, it's a little complicated, but it's a beautiful tool, and um, it keeps children safer. What they find is that they're much better at targeting resources, and so um, the children who are truly at risk are much more likely to get a visit, and the child who's not at risk is less likely to receive a visit. So again, just offering that as something that we might want to um, consider here in Monroe County and thanks for your attention. Hello all and Happy New Year. My name is Dan McDonald, and I'm speaking on behalf of what some of my other fellow veterans spoken earlier, the Service Able Veterans Small Business Act or Veterans Business Act. Uh, as you know, I've spoken here many times before, and some things have changed since the last time I was here. For one, I'd like to, unfortunately, she's not here, Cindy Cayley, for the bill she proposed. Unfortunately, it was tabled to allow us to be in that, those contracting goals now. Secondly, some of you have been elected, we've had an election. I personally have had an election too. I'm gonna to be the new uh, commander of our post in Webster. We have almost a thousand members, as well as we go into the district meetings. I kept my promise. We never made this a political issue this year. That's one thing. The other thing that I'm most proud of, my son, since we've been here, has now taken on the title Marine, has become a fellow veteran and a brother. As a matter of fact, today, as a matter of fact, today he texted me and said, Dad, my whole platoon's behind you. Don't give up. So we're not going to give up. Um, so those are the things that have happened and have changed. One thing I'd like to make clear, I understand some people may be thinking that I'm only doing this for myself and my business. Well, that is partly true. The one thing I'd like to see happen with all these goals set aside is that a certain percentage of that business must be whatever that business is, whether it's M, W, or service disabled. I personally, my entire survey department is veteran. 
Two of the veterans that I've hired had absolutely not one day's experience, which means I was willing to invest and yes, took a loss, but I'll do it all over again and that's what I'll continue to do. I'm currently getting ready to train two other veterans for construction inspection this summer. So if you want to help veterans, the more you help these veteran businesses, the more you're going to help veterans because we've learned we were the only ones that will take care of ourselves. For instance, as you men and women in the back have claimed or you know, you're losing your medical benefits, Federal government promised us good medical benefits, and well, I don't think you want to go to the VA for your care. So we know what it's like to be taken, you know, to have something taken away. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we've been here, we've been trying to do this. Uh, just please do the right thing, and again, show us the courage that we all showed you. Thank you, and have a good night. This concludes the public forum. At this time, we will recess the January 9th, 2018 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature and convene the Pure Waters Administrative Board for the Gates, Chile, Ogden, Sewer District, Arundacoy Bay, South Central, Pure Waters District, Northwest Quadrant, Pure Waters District, and Rochester, Pure Waters District. If there are no objections, we will move referral number 17-0367, 17-0369, and 17-0371 for each district with one vote. The clerk will see to it that in each individual motion and resolution numbers are assigned to each. Can we have a little quiet back there, please? Madam Clerk, please note the attendance and read the first item on the agenda. PWEB agenda item numbers 1, 4, 7, and 10 well, for referral. Why don't you referral. hold on a minute until they... We have a little quiet, please, back there. Go ahead, Diana. P. Web agenda item numbers 1, 4, 7, and 10 for referral 17 0367. Moved move by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Hebert. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed item carries next item. P Web agenda item numbers 2, 5, 8, and 11 for referral 17 0369. Moved by, moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Hebert. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. P Web agenda item numbers 3, 6, 9, and 12, referral 17 0371. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Hebert. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. P Web agenda item number 13, referral 18 0005. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Hebert. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carried, um, carries. We will now recess the Gates Ogden, Gates Chile Ogden Sewer District, Arundaquay Bay South Central Pure Waters District, Northwest Quadrant Pure Waters District, and Rochester Pure Waters District and adjourn the Pure Waters Administrative Board. The January 9th, 2018 meeting of the legislature is reconvened. We will now proceed with the consideration of local laws. Will the clerk please read the first item on the agenda? Item number one, referral 17-0342, LL. Moved by Legislator Conley, seconded by Legislator L. Coffer. This is a motion to lift. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries, next item. Item number two, referral 17-0342, LL. Moved by Legislator Conley, seconded by Legislator L. Coffer. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? Legislator Marianetti. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, quick question through you to the administration. Is there an approximate number you can give us of how many veterans uh, in Monroe County are receiving this exemption currently?
through the president, uh, 1,569. Okay, thank you. Um, and lastly, Mr. President, I just rise to express my support for this local law um, and also my appreciation for the veterans in the community, whether their services during the Cold War or any other time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Legislator Marionetti. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. We'll now proceed with consideration of motions, resolutions, and notices. Will the clerk read the next item on the agenda? Yes, Legislator Marionetti. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to make a motion uh, that the remainder of the items, agenda items number 3 through 21, uh, be moved through one vote and considered with one vote of this legislature. Do I have a second? Second by Legislator Light and Legislator Flagler Mitchell. Could you say that again, Legislator Barath? 180004, matter of urgency. <laughs> Item 20. Okay, so we'll go to that one, Diana. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, let's vote on the moving the agenda with the exception of. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. So we'll go to item 20. So item number 20 is referral 18-0004 LL. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Herbert Hebert. This is to set a public hearing. Is there any discussion? Legislator Baroff. Thank you, Mr. President. I just simply want to ask, um, why is this a matter of urgency? This, is a, this uh, is brought to you before you as a matter of urgency to expedite the construction and the development of the new uh, public works facility and uh, that the town is uh, building adjacent to 590. Uh, these are lands that are owned by the county and a driveway that leads into one of the DES's uh, spill ways for the, um, uh, for the storm sewer system. Um, we're transferring that property to the town in order for them to move forward uh, in cooperation with the state in developing uh, that project. We don't want any time to be wasted in doing it this, this at their request. Thank you. So uh, just uh, repeat the last bit you said at their request, correct, to the, to the uh, president? Yes. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. With that, there being no further unfinished business, Legislator Marionetti. Thank you, Mr. President. We stand adjourned until 6 p.m. Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. Thank you.